Hello, my name is Jack Lynch and I'm a Solutions Specialist at Altair Knowledge Works. Today I will be demonstrating how to utilize Monarch with banner headcount reports to find term to term changes. To begin, we are simply going to drag and drop our headcount report into Monarch, which will open up our report design interface. From here, we are going to create a detail template to create a new row for every major in this term. To trap these lines in the report, we're going to use the numeric trap in the six places where that term resides. Once this is done, we are simply going to highlight each part of our sample to define the fields in our resulting table, which you can see at the bottom of the screen. Once we are satisfied with how we are extracting data from this report, we are going to click on Accept in the upper left-hand corner. We have now moved into the preparation interface within Monarch. Within this interface, you can begin to clean and manipulate the data that you have in a structured form. For now, I will just be trimming some white space off of that level column, but we will perform more manipulations later on once we have brought in all of our data. Since we want to examine changes from term to term, what we're going to do is duplicate the model we created for term one and use that duplication for our second term. To bring in the report containing the data for our second term, we right click on the report being used by the term two model and remove that report. We now drop the term two report right into the model. Now we have both term one and term two residing within Monarch and we can start to make some changes and perform transformations in order to compare the two terms. Before we begin to do so, I am opting to bring in some additional information from an Excel spreadsheet, which we want to join to the data from terms one and two. The relevant information I want to bring into these tables is what program each major belongs to. To join this data together, we click on the Combine tab and select Join. We then select the two tables that we want to join together and hit Click to Join. This will open up our Join Configuration interface. As I previously mentioned, we are going to use the Major column from each table as our Join key, and the type of Join that we are going to use is going to be a Lookup Join. This maintains all of the rows from our Term 2 table and adds the information from the first match found from the table with the programs. We only really want the program from that second table, so we can opt to only bring in that program. Now that we've joined together, you can see that we have the original table with all of that information and also that program from the table that we used to look up from. In order to attach that program information to our term one, we are simply going to use those same steps that we use to combine with term two with term one. With that join finished, we have two tables, one for term one and one for term two and both of them have that program column included. We are going to perform one more join now that we have all of our relevant information regarding the headcount by major, as well as what department and program that major belongs to. We are going to join the term one table with term two, and the join type that we are going to use is the full join. This is because we want to lose no information from either table, as there are majors that no longer exist in the first term, and some brand new majors that did not exist before the second term. What the full join will do is it will match up the majors that exist in both terms and bring along those with no matches. With the join complete, we are going to return to our prepare window. You can see in instances where matches were not made, the resulting cells in these columns are null. Now this table has a few columns that are unnecessary for comparing the headcounts from term to term. By right clicking on the load plan in the left side of the screen, we can edit the join we just performed and opt to leave behind 
columns that we deem unnecessary in order to make this table a bit smaller and more manageable. You may notice that the column headers from our first term are as they were prior to the join. That's simply because they were the leftmost table in our join hierarchy. Now, the first thing I wanna to do to clean up this table is just rename a couple of these columns to add some clarity. Once I'm finished doing that though, we do wanna make a few actual changes to the data itself. For example, in the count column, uh, where we have nulls, those aren't necessarily accurate being represented as nulls, we can more accurately represent them as a zero. So replacing those nulls with the zero and doing the same for our count from our second term. We can do that by just dragging and dropping that change from our change history right on top of the other column. To perform changes in the prepare screen, you simply right click on the column you would like to make changes to. And the next changes we will perform are just consolidating the major program and department columns from each term into one column. I start by right clicking, selecting new formula column, and I'm going to build an if statement. The if statement is going to say that if the original program column is null, then we want to bring in the information from the second term's program. And if it's not null, meaning that there is information in that column, just bring in the information from the original column. We now have one column that's a consolidated program, bringing in information from both of the program columns from each term and just transforming that into one column. We can then delete the old program columns as they're no longer necessary. Using that same methodology, we're going to do the same for our major as well as our department. To handle the null values in the columns for each term, we can replace the nulls with a ditto function, which copies the information downwards from cells located above. As I consolidate columns and handle these nulls, each of the changes are added to the interactive change history on that right hand side of the screen. Now that our cleanup steps are complete, we can create a formula column to determine the headcount difference from term one to term two for each major. Creating the formula column is simply subtracting term one from term two. Now we want to see what the headcount change is from term to term by each program and then by each department. In order to aggregate the headcount by department and program, click on the transform tab and select the group transformation. We want to have one row for each program in the resulting table, so our grouping keys are going to be our department and our program. We then elect to bring in the summation of each headcount for each term, as well as the headcount difference. If we want to bring back our terms to look at them side by side, we can right click on that group by, edit the grouping, and add them in as grouping keys. We can now perform one final grouping to examine the headcount change for each department by taking the same steps we just took for our summation by program and just grouping on department. With that, we now have three tables created from two banner generated headcount reports that provide the headcount change from term to term by major, by program, and by department.